So hey, Colin, thanks again for getting together with me here for a second. So, Absolutely. So first of all, thank you for sponsoring the Shaping Fire podcast. Uh, we love your support. Yes. And we love telling people about Mammoth P. Um, and you know, since your commercials run on the Shaping Fire podcast, a lot of people come up to me and ask me about the product. Yep. You know, I can say, you know, I use the product and I like the product and what it does for me, but there are like like four questions that people are always asking me that um, I know I'm giving them suboptimum answers because it's not my product, right? right? So I'd love to go through those questions with you and just have you answer them the proper way, and then and then when people ask me, I can just send them for this video, all right? Perfect. All right. So so before we get into those four questions, for anybody who's not familiar with the Mammoth P product from uh, Mammoth Microbes, will you just explain what it does? Yep, absolutely. So my name is Colin Bell. I'm the co-founder of Mammoth Microbes and the inventor of the technology. Mammoth P is a liquid organic microbial additive that acts as a catalyst to maximize plant phosphorus uptake that allows plants to take up as much phosphorus naturally as a plant possibly can which allows the plant to maximize its health, development, quality, and yield. And that's what we see when growers apply Mammoth P as an additive in their fertigation or nutrient regime that the plants will maximize their phenotypic potential, maximizing their quality, and increase the yield as much as that plant can do. We typically see an average of around 16% increased yield with Mammoth P additions. So is the idea of what's actually in the bottle is um, a collection of microbes, living microbes, and and they are helping change the form of the phosphorus so it's more readily uptakeable by the plant? Is that's that the idea? A, that's exactly right. right. It's, uh, transforming phosphorus from unavailable forms to bioavailable forms, and that's a microbial function, and that's why we selected the microbes, the active consortia of microbes that's in Mammoth P. It's just a concentrated bottle of microbes. But these microbes function to facilitate phosphorus liberation to maximize availability for plant uptake. Phosphorus liberation, I like that, right on. Yeah. All right, so here are the four questions that I get all the time. <clears throat> so the first one, since it is a living product, and you know, you know, probiotic growers are always trying to you know, ferment things or make compost teas, people ask me, can they, can they just buy one bottle of, of Mammoth P and then just take little bits of it and, and incubate it to make it more, right? To, yeah. By adding a little bit of molasses or something to it, to make it grow and then never have to buy the product again. Is it, is it possible to do that? So conceptually, yes, these are active microbes. They are viable and they will grow in different substrates. The challenge is maintaining the integrity of the community structure. I think what happens as we repropagate communities of microbes over time, that there's going to be drift in the relative abundances of the different microbes. And that relative abundance is, is really important. We did a lot of studies to show that the microbes in Mammoth P in those relative abundances do facilitate much higher phosphorus cycling than the isolates, the individuals, or different combinations of the species they're in. So you, I would, I think that you're gonna compromise the quality of the product over time by doing that. I do recommend plugging it in. It's, that's, that's one of the reasons we made it so concentrated. So it is scalable, it's 0 0.6 mils per gallon. And so the product does last to go a long way. And you can play with it, and I'm all about experimenting, but just know that we have experimented internally. And over time, we do see drift, and that's why we recommend going back to the main source. You might even carry it out one generation, but then it'd be nice to start from the, from the original source of the bottle that you purchased uh, to continue, you know, just maximizing confidence. So when you say drift, um, if I'm interpreting it right, interpreting it right, what you're saying is that okay, so when you got the bottle, you've got a particular ratio of microbes, but when you go to try to incubate it yourself, those microbes are opportunists. So if it's uh, warmer or colder or there's more air or less air, it's going to choose different microbes to favor and then it's going to get out of balance of what it's supposed to be. And all of your testing of why Mammoth P works is because of the of the microbe mix that's in the bottle. And so when you go and you try to uh, redo it yourself, you might get drifting percentages so it's not really the actual product anymore. Yeah, and, and, and yes, uh, there's confidence in knowing that you have something very consistent in the Mammoth P bottle. If we start to work on trying to scale the microbes up, 
just inherently, if you don't have a completely sterile room, which we have pretty much in our, in our facilities when we're scaling the bottles up and we wash the bottles and do everything, you're gonna get a lot of issues, environmental fluctuations, seasonal environmental fluctuation, you have contaminants coming in and seasonally. And so it's really hard to think with confidence that you can continue to repropagate mammoth and keep it pristine. Right on. It'd be hard to do. Right on, that makes sense. So, um, you know, so I'm gonna bring up this question, but I understand that it's pretty farcical, but, but people will often mention on threads that there are, there are microbes in the product that are dangerous to humans, right? And so some people say, I won't buy it because it's got you know, this or you know, another microbe. And the odd thing is, is like the people will choose different microbes. Yeah. So, so you know, is the product in any way uh, you know, dangerous to humans even if used incorrectly? No, I mean, you don't want to ingest any fertilizer. You don't want to ingest any live microbial product. It's not good for you. I've actually had some growers write me and say, hey, long story short, don't ask. I ingested some MFP and nothing <laughs> bad happened. Don't try that at home. It's not a good idea no matter what. But, you know, uh, that's part of the rigor of the regulation. Mm -hmm. We have to register our product with every state, with every country. We have a really sophisticated team of actually world leaders of soil microbial ecologists early on that we brought on board to make sure that we're doing everything the right way. We're scientists and we want to bring value to growers using microbial solutions. Every one of the microbes and the strains that we have in Mammoth P are bio, bio level safety one, which means that you know there is the very lowest chance of anything bad happening and we haven't had any cases ever of anything like that occurring. You know, we do recommend uh, using safety precautions, just like any fertilizer would on the label. It's just kind of a generic. Mm -hmm. We've had guys producing the product since day one. You know, it's just no different than brewing a tea. Mm -hmm. Honestly, the way you're handling mammoth pea. Mm -hmm. uh, the difference in mammoth pea is they're so functionally targeted that they, you're gonna use that as a specific clone or bloom stimulant uh, to maximize the availability of phosphorus for plant uptake. Right on. So this last one, this is the most common question that I get from people. Yeah. Um, uh, and I guess this is kind of a two-part question. Uh, number one, um, does it matter when it changes colors? Right. And number two, how do you figure out what the expiration date is? Both great questions. So the expiration date on the bottle, we suggest using with, within one year after opening. The expiration date is on every single bottle on the on the back, so you can see that. Our, our shelf life data now is real-time data, and it's out over 27 months. Oh. And so the, the product is actually viably good, data supported over 27 months. Saying that, we do still recommend using it with one year after opening because that, that continues to Once change. Once you add that oxygen, it's a different thing. Well, the microbial activity actually increases when you open the bottle, and so it, it's amazing how long these microbes last in, the, in this solution. So I'm not worried about that at all. I do think that you should follow recommended applications. If you can use it within two years, you're gonna be perfectly fine. And again, just so there's no misunderstanding, we just gave guidelines on the back of the bottle because honestly, every time we get more data, we can change all the labels or we just wait till it goes out. The first, the first uh, shelf life or recommended uh, use on the label was six months mm -hmm. because we had six months worth of data, so we put that on there. Then when we had two years, we actually changed it out a little further. So shelf life's not an issue. It lasts as long, longer than any product I've seen on the market. It's actually fascinating. What's but, uh, the change in the color part? Changing the color is oxidation that occurs Sometimes, not always, and it's very confusing. We've dialed in why. It's a little harder to control. This is life in a bottle. This is nature in a bottle, and there is some variability. What we do know is that the guarantee analysis is at least is at least the same between the lighter bottles and the darker bottles. What we do know also is there's slightly higher microbial activity and higher microbial concentration, CFU counts, in the darker bottles, which means that actually the darker bottles are a little more effective probably than the lighter bottles. And we have a lot of growers that use Mammoth, and what they do is they like to grab the darker bottles because they know it's a little more concentrated. Mm -hmm. Both of them are very effective and work very well. That happens because as microbial activity slightly increases, sometimes it can create a slight oxidation event, which actually colors some of the carbon constituents in the bottle. Slight change in color as an effect of slightly higher activity. I still, our team still can't figure out how to normalize that to keep it consistent. It's a little bit of a mystery. Again, it's really hard to control every aspect of nature and we're dealing with nature. 
soil microbes that we're trying to package for farmers and for growers. And so it's a little bit of a challenge. We're still working on it. I hope to have a better answer soon. But what, what I do say and a standby is that mammoth pea microbes work and maybe even a little better with the darker color. Right on. Cool. Well, thanks for answering those questions for me. Now I can just like move everybody along to this video. Yay. And if you want to um, learn more about the Mammoth Pea product, um, you can go ahead and click on the link down in the first comment and it'll take you right to the Mammoth Pea product. Thanks a lot for your time, Thank Colin. You. Right on. Appreciate it.